Okay, so I'm currently preparing a lesson on Moodle about synthesizers, about synthesis. Um, and there's this really good bit of free software simply called Rack, which is emulating um, like an old modular synthesizer. Um, oh, I say old, I sort of started off that way, but they're still popular today. You can still buy different components, different modules for a um, rack mounted synthesizer unit, like what this is displaying here. Um, it's quite a complicated piece of software. Um, so this video is literally going to focus on the real basics. So just basically how to make some sounds, um, how to control, uh, change the different oscillator type, how to change the frequency, um, how to use the filter, how to ch um, look at the envelope, and um, also sort of looking at the um, oscill oscilloscope, I find that hard to say, um, or just scope for short, which is here, which shows you the different waveforms. So it's a nice visual way of sort of seeing what you're, you're doing. Um, okay, so the first thing you need to do, you need to come over to this area here, which is audio eight. There's actually some instructions here, so you can follow those as well. Um, so where it says audio eight, this is where you um, set up where the sound comes out of. So you want core audio, that's good. Um, and at, at the moment when you first load it up, it says no device, so we need to change that. Um, most of the time, you're probably gonna to want to use built-in output. This might say something a bit different if you're using um, a PC. So this is available, this software is available for both Mac and PC. Um, so built-in output will come out of the um, headphone socket or your speakers. Um, if you've got an audio interface like me, you can um, route the audio out of there. Uh, I'm actually gonna make it come out of the uh, built-in output because then I'm recording into the audio interface via that. So I click on that there. Next thing you wanna do is make sure uh, you come over to the MIDI area over here. So this is what's going to actually be sending notes into the synthesizer. So you'll see the default here is computer keyboard. So you can use your laptop keyboard or um, desktop keyboard, whatever you've got, uh, as an actual sort of music keyboard. So um, see that the option here is QWERTY keyboard. So if I click on uh, letter Q, and it, I can then play the keys like a music keyboard. But I've actually got a uh, MIDI keyboard plugged in currently. So where it says computer keyboard, I can change that uh, to be core MIDI. And then where it says no device, I can change that to my um, various MIDI stuff I've got plugged into my computer. So I'm going to choose my Eddie Roll, which is my keyboard. So now I can play my MIDI keyboard. Um, which is a bit easier than using the keys. So the next thing to have a look at is, um, let's just go from left to right. So we've got voltage, the VCO1, that stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator 1. So this is emulating a analog synthesizer, which uses um, different voltage signals to, to um, send signals to different parts of the synthesizer. So, but this is all digital because it's obviously a bit of software but it's emulating that. So they've stuck with the same sort of terminology. So voltage controlled oscillator. Really that should say digitally controlled oscillator, but never mind. Um, so here you can change your different um, waveforms. So you can see, you should be familiar with these. You've got sin, which is short for sine, tri, triangle, saw, and square wave. Uh, and because this is a modular synthesizer, it uses these little patch cables to join things up. So this is again emulating what the real thing uh, would be like. So instead of just literally clicking a dial over the saw, you have to like plug in a little cable to send the, the signal of the saw wave to the next part of the synthesizer, which in this case is the um, filter. So if I play a note now, you should see in the uh, oscilloscope uh, the scope here uh, it should display a sort of like a sawtooth shape you'll see that it's a bit rounded 
Uh, that, there's a reason for that, and that's because it's switched onto analog mode. So what this does is it tries to emulate the sort of slightly warmer, um, imperfect waveforms created by an analog synthesizer. So if you wanted it to be more, much more pure, you can um, a, a more accurate, you can switch it to digital mode. And now if I play, you should see a pretty perfect triangle wave displayed in the scope. I can come over to the scope here and when it says time, if I put that all the way up, there, that, that will show me a bit more of a simplified screen on the scope, so the sort of shorter the time, the more compact it looks. So we want it nice and slow so we can see the waveforms clearly. Okay, yeah, so I can, I can change my sawtooth now to a square wave by just clicking and dragging it. Again, I can change that to analog. I've got a bit more of a rounded square wave, weird thing to say. Um, triangle and then the sine wave okay so the next part um, let's go back let's put it back to sawtooth so this is then being fed so you follow these cables so let's go right back to the MIDI part here so um, VOCT here which is just sort of the output the vo um, the, the voltage output from the from the MIDI uh, goes into this here. So this is basically saying that the notes are going into the voltage controlled oscillator. So then after there, you then follow the next cable, and it's going into the filter, voltage control filter. You'll notice as well. There's also gate, and gate. If you follow that cable, is going to the ADSR, which is the um, attack, decay, sustain, release. So that's the envelope. So what gate is, is it's the, it's the data from the MIDI keyboard telling um, the synthesizer when to start and stop the note. So this is telling the synthesizer what note to play. This is telling the synthesizer when to start and stop. So that's important for the um, envelope because then you can shape how quick the attack is and um, how slow the release is and so on. So Let's go to the filter. So um, let's let's play a note. So at the moment we've got a low pass filter. You can actually increase the sort of effectiveness of the filter by um, changing this dial here. If you remove, if you move it up a bit, it gives you a bigger range. Just zoom in on the waveform a bit so we can see that a bit clearer. So you can see that's working there. Um, you can change that to uh, a high pass filter. well so let's change that back so the filters you'll notice are going to uh, the mixer so the sound um, because the sound is going from the oscillator into the filter and then it goes to the mixer which is like um, the amplifier bit so anything so if I remove this cable here which you can do by right clicking I'll no longer have any sound so I need to sort of reconnect that back up so it's going into number one of the mixer, channel number one. So I could create like a load more oscillators and then um, put them into the different channels of the mixer, which we'll do in the next little session I do on this. But today we just mess around with what's already here. So remember resonance. Let's go back to the filter. Resonance, um, what that does is it um, boosts the frequencies around the cutoff point. So the cutoff point is wherever this um, dial is. 
So there's a little bit of resonance at the moment. If I completely remove it, it kind of makes it sound more like a vol volume sort of fade. But if I turn up the resonance, it adds all sorts of stuff. It sort of really boosts the, uh, uh, the frequency around the cutoff point to add sort of extra harmonics and stuff. So it makes the waveform more, more complicated. So I'll turn that back down again. And drive is like, an, like a distortion sort of thing. You can see it adds extra volume to it and distorts it. Again, it makes the waveform more complex. Now there's an interesting thing about uh, using sine wave. So let's change that back to sine wave. Now sine waves are, um, they're a pure tone. So you can't really filter them because if you filter out the, uh, any frequencies from it, you, you just turn it down because the only frequency it's got is the note itself. Whereas a square wave has got the note itself plus lots of other frequencies, uh, the harmonic frequencies and, and um, overtones, which are um, sort of what gives it its character. But because a sine tone doesn't really have any character, it's just literally a pure note, um, You can't. there's nothing else to remove. So the only thing you remove is the note itself. So basically the filter turns into a volume dial. So let's have a look at that. So it's... Um, Basically, it just turns it down. I think there's something a bit weird happening. It might be because of that dial. The filter's adding a bit of distortion to it, but basically, it just turns it down. Uh, whereas it sounds, when you do use a square wave, you can hear you, you're removing all the extra frequencies until you get to a sine wave because you've removed everything other than the, the sort of pure tone underneath. That's quite interesting when you use a scope like this, you can actually see what's going on. Okay, so next let's move on to the um, envelope. So the envelope, like I said, is being controlled by um, when the note is turned on and off, which is what this gate is doing. So we've, we have briefly talked about envelopes before, but let's go over that again. So ADSR stands for attack, decay, sustain, release. This is your attack. This is your decay. This is your sustain, and this is your release. So the output from the um, envelope is going to control here underneath um, input one which is coming from which is basically our, our, our notes going in there so um, this is um, controlling the, the, the dynamics so the, the mixer part sometimes gets called the amp part so that's controlling um, sort of how much we turn it up how quickly we turn up the note and down again so that's kind of done by the, the, the um, mixer section of the of the synthesizer so um let's start with um let's have our release all the way down low just don't worry too much about these at the moment and just so we've got my attack right down low so that means it's like a percussive sound very fast uh, attack so the slower i turn it up The more of a swell I get, the higher up it is. So this this dial represents time. So right at the bottom here, it'd be nice if there's some units of time on here, really. But right at the bottom here would be like zero seconds. It's like in instantly the sound starts, and up here would be like two or three seconds, or whatever it is, longer than that, five seconds or so. Um, so, so that's how long it takes for the sound to basically all I'm doing is I'm automating turning up the volume. 
So let's turn that back to be quite fast again. So I'm just going to dodge um, decay for a minute because there's a reason for that. I'm going to move on to sustain. So sustain is um, unlike attack is not a unit is not in units of time. Instead of it, it's it's a level. So it's what level the attack goes up or the note sort of settles on. So if I have that quite quiet. You can kind of hear the note, it's, the, the volume it settles on is quite low, but if I have that really high, it settles on a, a high note. And then the decay is to do with how long it takes to get to that sustained level. So if, it, if the decay was really low, it just instantly gets to the sustain level. So the decay actually only does anything if it's if it's higher than the sustain so the sustain has to be lower than the decay for it to actually doing it do anything so if i have a really long just turn down the sustain quite a lot have a bit of a longer decay you can hear after the attack it then decays down to the sustain level you can see quite nice as uh, these these little flashy lights so you can, it tells you which part of the envelope it's currently on. So it will kind of work through like this. So let's turn the release up a little bit. So you see that the attack, turn that up a bit, starts with the attack, then it goes to the decay, then it decays to the sustain, and then when I release the note, it goes to the, when I let go of the note on the keyboard, sorry, it goes to the release. So let's turn that up higher and the attack up higher. You should see now it sort of steps through this in the sequence. Attack, decay, and it holds it under the disdain until I let go of the note, and then it goes to the release and turns it down slowly. Okay, I think that's about everything for this lesson. Um, obviously, you can turn up. This is just like a master, master volume for this oscillator. And then this is our master volume for the whole synthesizer, so that'll turn everything up if you add other stuff. So yeah, just thought this is quite a nice thing considering it's free. A good way to learn um, synthesis. It's quite complicated to kind of getting your head around all the patching and stuff. So we, we probably won't go into too much depth with it, but it, I think we'll do um, another lesson soon where we will... Um, sort of generate more oscillators and we can sort of start to mix them together and maybe do some stuff with um, low frequency oscillators as well. But that is everything for now.